Good morning, everyone. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Wurundjeri people from the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. But to start off, I want to get the big question of the day out of the way. The Sussexes had a boy. <laughs> For those of you that didn't know already, because it's been all over the news this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, professors, doctors, nurses, psychologists, social workers, peer support workers, mental health tribunal members, police officers, water police officers, yes, I've had contact with them as well, ambulance officers, and as a carer, mums, dads, sisters, brothers, relatives, friends, and if there's anyone here that I haven't already mentioned, my apologies. Um, I just want to give my profound thanks for the wonderful work that you do for our children. Um, I, I, can't, I, I think you are underappreciated um, in society and I just, having been through this, I just want to make it clear to you that uh, we really do appreciate the wonderful work that you do with our children. So thank you. Um, when I look at these, you know, people often say that you should start with a joke. It's a bit of a difficult subject to joke about, so I thought I might mention funding. <laughs> <laughs> but it does seem that that's already on the um, federal government's radar, and both sides of politics seem to be uh, putting something into that. So I do hope that you are able to get a little bit of extra funding for something that is very valuable. Um, although quite controversial, it was uh, a controversial who first said this. Um, I believe it was Coleman Cox in 1922 who said uh, in his book, listen to this, I'm a great believer in luck. The harder I work, the more I seem to have. And I'm sure you've all heard variations of that around somewhere. And I called my talk today a matter of luck because I want to acknowledge the very hard work that goes into recovering each and every individual child that's in this situation. And it is massive and it's ongoing and it's relentless and you need to do it over and over and over again in many different circumstances. So I really want to uh, focus on that today. I'm actually a TAFE teacher, so I see a lot of young people who are in mental health crisis. Um, just recently I've been trying to, a young boy who is, who is so paralysed with anxiety that he can't speak to or look at any of his lecturers and we're trying to teach him how to become an electronics uh, technician, soldering, being in a workshop. Um, it's such a challenge for us. And I see his mother turning up uh, every week almost trying to get him to come into class. I know she's sat in the car with him for several hours trying to encourage him to come in. Um, I'm not the lecturer, I'm, I'm the head of programs there, so I've gone and met with this young boy, but we just can't get him over this hurdle of attending a new class. So what we've decided is that we will let him come to class every week for as long as he is able and not participate, and hopefully over the next 12 months he'll be comfortable enough to re-attend next year and actually do the course. So um, I, I also want to acknowledge the great work that, uh, well I don't know about TAFEs in other states, but certainly in Western Australia, uh, we put a lot of effort into um, you know, trying to encourage and nurture these, these children through um, returning to education. But today of course I'm here in my professional capacity as a mother of a, uh, a child who's had some mental health issues and as mentioned earlier um, she has been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder and look I really want to uh, uh, say that it's been such uh, a sad process but also a privilege to witness uh, a young person go through this journey um, from uh, you know not knowing what's going on with their life to, to now being able to function uh, pretty much in society. So um, it's been a privilege for me and I, I feel really, really great about that. So today I, I 
just want to give you a little bit of background about my daughter. I want to talk about the process of functional, functional recovery and some of the wonderful people and organisations that we've met in that process. And um, I want to talk about what functional recovery, recovery looks like for my daughter. So for, we first came into contact, well, the first time, I'm a, I'm a, I was, um, I know I probably look pretty young to you all, you know, very, but um, I actually was um, quite late. I had my daughter, I was into, almost into my 40s. And I, I was going along, I thought everything was completely normal. I'm, you know, this is the first time I've done this, I thought she was fabulous, a little bit difficult to get along with, but you know, I thought everything was going pretty normal. But it was in pre-primary that they said to me, um, your daughter's not the same as everyone else. And this came as a, a bit of a shock to me. Um, what ensued, and I'm sure this story goes everywhere, is a, a long process of visits to doctors, visits to clinics, visits, visits to you know, uh, opticians if she couldn't see properly, to all sorts of organisations, which we did over many, many years. And we took her for a few visits to a um, neurology um, specialist in Perth. And on the first visit, they suggested to me that she might have some kind of Asperger's. And um, although she's never been diagnosed with that, I've really clung to that because I, I think that I really see in her those types of um, those types of behaviours. But on our second visit there, the um, the clinician told me that it was my fault. I'd put the idea into her head, and I just needed to relax, and she'd be fine. So in the car on the way home, I said to her, "Honey, good news. The doctor says you're cured, and um, you can just carry on with school." So um, from then on, I, I just thought, look, I'm going to let this go. But in 2011, I had a call from the school to say that she had, um, some of the girls had stolen her diary at school and they were reading it and teasing her about it. And so she, I thought quite justified, threatened to kill one of them. And uh, so we were taken, told immediately to go to the mental health unit at um, our children's hospital. So that was the first time that we'd, we'd ever um, been involved with mental health. Unfortunately, like many kids who are a little bit different, she decided that she would self-medicate with drugs. And it started in school with some of the kids who were really bright were using no-dose to stay up all night and study. And um, so she uh, thought that was pretty cool. And she did tell me once that when she was taking drugs, she felt like she could think more clearly that she could process things in a better way and she felt like she belonged, which up until then she hadn't. So unfortunately, we started this seesaw into psychosis uh, through drug use. I don't think I need to tell anyone in this room how bad things can be. She's lived on the streets, she's attempted suicide and she's caused me to feel unsafe in my own home both in terms of other people that she's brought into the home and in terms of being afraid of her, which was just uh, amazing for me, uh, amazing to, to think my little baby could make me feel afraid. Eventually, um, she lapsed into psychosis, which she treated herself with meth because obviously you guys are all trying to poison her with the uh, antipsychotic medication. Um, and worse still, change her radical socialist political views. <laughs> Um, I can recall her standing on the street corner one night at midnight waiting for Vladimir Putin to come and pick her up. She had a case there ready and everything. So it's a scary thing as a parent to know that your child is experiencing something that you can't protect them from. And um, even in her 20s, uh, there's been many a night she slept in bed with me, uh, night after night. So um, I, I know what it's like. Our process, our road to recovery. So a couple of people I want to acknowledge along the way. Uh, I was in denial, like most parents. Uh, my beautiful daughter would never take drugs. I mean, I didn't. I was very open about drugs at home. We talked about them a lot. We talked about, you know, the good and the bad side of taking drugs and why people took them. Uh, but still, I don't know whether it encouraged her to take them or, or what the story was. They don't come with a manual. But what I really would like to say is that the lovely doctor in emergency who, you know, having um, looked it up on um, 
on social media or, or on the internet and spoken to a couple of friends, I insisted that she be tested for NDMA encephalitis, um, which very kindly they did. They put her through a battery of tests. So I was, I was very pleased that at least that was ruled out. So I want to say thanks to him. Um, the treatment we received in the mental health ward that she was in is somewhat different and I would love to see uh, hospitals have wards that are just for youth in that group because I'm sure you've seen, you know, my daughter was 17 and a half when she had her first psychosis. Nobody wanted to have her because she was almost on the cusp of becoming an adult, but she was not quite an adult, so it was very difficult to get her some care. Um, I'd love to see that middle ground uh, taken up by, um, by general health. My family GP was fabulous. I mean, I recommend family GPs to everyone. He was really good. And he, he was the one that kept me grounded and sane and gave me lots of good advice. During this time, um, while she was in hospital, we came to, uh, we came to first meet HIP. And um, they were instrumental in examining her um, her uh, medication routine into making sure that she was uh, properly medicated, that she stayed on medication. She was uh, subject to an inpatient treatment order for some time and then a community treatment order for uh, quite a while after that. Um, they introduced her uh, to, uh, Headspace introduced her to a number of different programs, both within Headspace and also outside Headspace. Things like fitness and yoga and nutrition and job seeking and budgeting life skills, because my daughter has none of those. She can't clean to keep herself, you know, she can't keep herself clean, she can't keep her house clean. Um, she never has been able to. Some counselling, some support around her drug use. Um, they've introduced her to drop-in centres where she could spend her time because as you know, it's a danger for them to be having nothing to do all day. Uh, referrals to government agencies, referrals to um, detox and rehabilitation agencies. And again, thanks, because I know that our kids are saying, I don't need that, um, I don't want it, I don't want to participate, I'll go if I'm made to, but I'm just gonna sit there sullenly and not join in. Um, and it's, I know it's exasperating, because I feel the same. You know, as parents, we feel the same. We're giving all these opportunities to our children and they're not accepting them. They're not participating. And I used to say to her, why can't you just join in? It's not that bad. No, I don't, I'm not, I don't belong there. I don't want to be there. So again, I, I recognise how, um, how difficult that is for you and thank you for your persistence. You know, that seesaw thing. They're there, they're not. They're there, they're not. Um, we had a caseworker assigned to us and that caseworker pretty much saved my life. Um, she was there to visit in hospitals. She was there to um, visit at home. She was there for me to talk to. She very kindly, um, during a time when my daughter was uh, able to consent, got my daughter's consent to share information with me. And so I was able to check with someone who understood her, I thought, as well as I did, whether or not it was me that was seeing stuff or whether I actually was um, noticing some strange stuff going on. And I found that my intuition was usually pretty good and I would confirm it with my caseworker who was just fantastic. She's been like a part of our family for some five or six years now. Um, and um, just here in front of her peers, uh, Nikki Perry, I'd like to thank you very much for the fabulous work you did for our family. I, I cannot thank you enough for what you did. Uh, you certainly saved my sanity and uh, I think you were very instrumental in my daughter's uh, recovery as well. So speaking in terms of recovery, and let's get on to that, um, just a little bit of background on the path. Um, my daughter, eventually I had to say to her, honey, I really love you, and in a crisis, I will always be here for you. But I can't have you living in the house with me anymore because you're putting me in danger. And I need to 
I need to protect myself first as much as I want to protect you as a mother. So I'm sorry, you will have to go. And of course that means emergency overnight facilities, sometimes on the streets, um, regularly she would abscond. Uh, I, I know all the homeless people in my area now. I go down and give them cigarettes and ask them, have you seen my daughter? Um, so, you know, just connecting with finding out what she's doing. It was a terrifying time for me. I, I can't, you know, I knew that she was in danger, but I couldn't let her keep coming back to my house and putting me in danger. Eventually, of course, she began to suffer another psychosis and so she was back into hospital. But the great thing that had happened this time was that because she was under a community treatment order, the police had to go out and look for her. And as a part of that, they announced her name over the radio and she was, you know, there was messages going out to media to say, if you see this girl, and they described her and she heard one of these broadcasts and it really frightened her. It made her realise that she was in very difficult circumstances. So, when they picked her up eventually, in fact, she handed herself in to the police, which was fabulous, and who, again, were wonderful with her, very kind to her. She said, they were so nice to me, Mum. But they said, we're sorry, we have to put you in the back. They were just great with her. Um, so she handed herself in. She went back to hospital for a while. Second stay in hospital, fantastic, completely different psychiatrist. The, the whole experience was a lot better. Um, so she went back to hospital. And following that, she agreed she would go into detox and rehab. Having spent her 18th and 21st birthdays in the mental health ward in hospital, she spent Christmas that final year in, uh, in detox. So, and that was a, a real experience for me as well. I'm sure it's pretty hard for her, but it was hard for me as well to go and say Merry Christmas to my daughter there. Um, she didn't stay in rehab. She, but she did want to change her life. That's what came out of it. Once she came out, I, I was really nervous that she was going to relapse, but um, we got her into uh, TAFE, a certificate for in mental health. Luckily, I worked there, so I was able to get her in and, and monitor her, um, her work there. And um, she, with quite a lot of help, she managed to obtain her certificate for in mental health. Um, but uh, she's a very bright girl. She's, she's now returned to university, so she's uh, studying a Bachelor of Social Work. She wants to advocate for people in her circumstances, and I'm sure she will. She speaks very well. So she's back studying. In terms of her living arrangements, she was lucky enough to get into a program called 50 Homes, 50 Lives, which is running in Western Australia and she uh, has some living support from a group called the Perth Inner City Youth Service. So um, she's got a Homes West little place not too far from me. Um, although, as I like to say, not only ha not have I just lost a daughter, I've gained another house to clean. So I've got two houses I need to keep clean now. In fact, I'm sending my cleaner there, but my cleaner said she wouldn't go there unless I went and tidied it up first. So that hasn't changed. I still have to ring her every day to uh, remind her to take her medication, morning and evening, and quite often she's forgotten, so that hasn't changed either. Is it over? Is, uh, are we at the end of this process? Maybe. She says she never wants to take drugs again. And I kind of feel that maybe she doesn't. But maybe not, because she also wants to stop taking her medication, which of course has made her balloon in weight, and so she feels very unhappy about that. But what I can say is that she is completely unrecognisable from the girl that she has been over the past five years. Um, she's still got her challenges, but then I guess that's a factor of life, and so she is in fact functionally recovered. So. I would also like to acknowledge my daughter, who has been brave and persistent and resilient. I think you would know anyone who's able to leave meth behind. That's a pretty big, that's a pretty big call. Um, she's not here today, but I don't know if she'll get, ever get to hear about this. So what I want to say is, honey, I'm so proud of what you've achieved. You are an amazing inspiration. So I hope you, she does go on to become a peer support worker or some kind of advocate. So, in conclusion, um, 
I've just had a bit of a brief look at her history. I've talked about some of the wonderful people and agencies that were involved. I've talked a little bit about what functional recovery looks like for her. You'll notice I, I've had no overheads or slides today because this kind of stuff is quite difficult to put into overheads and slides, especially when it's so personal. But I will be around for most of the day today and I would love it if you would come and talk to me, uh, if you want to ask me any questions. If you have a loved one who's in the same situation, I would love to hear your story. Please feel free to share it with me. And um, remember, I talked earlier about Coleman Cox, the guy who said, I'm a great believer in luck. The harder I work, the more of it I seem to have. Um, I think you can see that the very hard work of very many wonderful people and organisations have gone into my daughter's functional recovery. And because of that, I feel as though I have been very, very lucky. So thank you. Thank you very much.